Good luck down there as Shane O'Neill was trying to make his way towards the uh, target. Comes to Timmy Kelleher. Outside to another man with a green helmet, that's Fergal Ryan. Down towards Mark Mullins. Good turn by the Napiershik man. In it goes towards Alan Brown. Good pick up by Brown. Dropping short, Joe Quaid called into the action. Off his left-hand side makes a fine clearance to the centre of the field. And another broken stick there, that's Shawnee McCarthy's second broken stick and we've only played seven or eight minutes. This comes out to Mike Galligan. Galligan trying to get away from Jim Cashman. Hand passed inside there towards Damien Quigley. He was such a threat as we know from past matches. Barry Eagan wasn't quite sure where that one went. Went beyond him and Bart Foley. As far as Kieran Carey. The wind really holding back that ball. <coughs> It'll be a fork sideline ball. Kieran McGuckin coming across to take it. Joe Quaid at the opposite end. McGuckin was attached to the Cork Senior Early team around 1990, then went off the scene for a while because of work commitments. Here's Mark Foley. He used to be playing as a half forward, now converted for the last month to half back. Big test for him, big test for everybody. Here's Gary Kirby going by. McCormick trying to get in a challenge. The loose man outside here, Owen O'Neill, and that's put over the bar. Owen O'Neill, the student of UCC, gets his first point, stretches Limerick's lead. And they lead by two once again. That was very good backup play there. One mistake by the Cork backs, and they were punished. Well, the Cork health tight line hasn't settled down at all yet. A lot of missing there. That ball should have been cleared to occasion. Gary Kirby robs Jim Cashman. Ball to O'Neill and over the bar. So Limerick going really well playing against the wind. Sean O'Neill makes the catch in midfield. He's a brother of Owen. He was tripped. And the other O'Neill, of course, in the squad. That's Shane. He's just a member of the same clan. Brita Limerick. Just outside the 65-metre line. Breeze against him. Dave Clark's free. Drops in towards Gary Kirby. Breaks it down. It's Fergal McCormick who gets it out. Towards Sean McCarthy. Little flick on. Didn't go much beyond Mike Hoolan, however. Having the awareness to spot a colleague who is Mark Foley. Forward towards Damien Quigley. He's got pace. And he knows where the target is. And he gets another good score for Limerick. His first. A defiant clenched fist there from Damien Quigley, acknowledging the pass and making it five points to two. Well, that's the first time the ball has been played directly into Damien Quigley, and when he rounds his man, you can just say bye bye. Great score from Damien, and now that he's got started, he could be a real danger from now on. Well, only about 12 minutes gone, and already Cork in a bit of a crisis. Jack Cunningham's puck out, would be expected to go further than that. That's Mike Coolahan back in his own half back line, batting it forward to Shane O'Neill, crisp striking hurling. Coach Tobin racing across here. John O'Driscoll has gone with him. And the referee coming across. That'll be a free in. This is what happened again as John O'Driscoll was coming across here with Podge Tobin. And a little push there in the back, and the referee says free to Limerick. Tobin, of course, from the Kilmala Club, reached the All-Ireland Club final a few years ago. They were beaten by Sarsfields of Galway. Gary Kirby is the free taker. This would be his first point. And it is. Limerick have made a great start. They lead by six points to two, playing against the breeze. Well, Limerick playing really well. They seem much sharper, much fit, not, well, I won't say much fitter, but a way, way sharper to the ball. They're playing great, the right hauling into the wind. A switch in the Cork team. Teddy McCarthy has gone to midfield in a direct switch with Brian Corcoran. Corcoran's now on the 40, which is his favourite position. So what can he do? Cork needing scores. Limerick have a handsome lead. Early stages. Mike Coulahan in the Guinness Monster Hurling Championship first round tie. Fergal McCormack down towards the aforementioned Brian Corcoran. Good solo forward. Plays with great heart, always does. Joe Dean, the UCC student, neatly in towards Mark Mullins. Well blocked down by Dave Clark. Comes out here towards Barry Egan. Can they finish with a score? And the answer is definitely yes. A well worked point finished by Barry Egan. His second point. One from a free, one from play. 
and Brian Corcoran was very much involved, Jer. Well, this is the first time Brian Corcoran has gotten got involved in the game. His, his best position, most people would think, is centre forward. So the, the first time he has got the ball there, he has set up a score for Cork. Good score by Barry Egan. Ironically, it was in the league where Sean McMahon, your centre half back, held him well. That well, Cork had second th thoughts about the whole thing. That's true. Mike Hulahan. Great skill by Hulahan, the midfielder. Delivered well inside their touch top. And here's danger. Well stopped on the line by Joe Cunningham. Gets it out just about. Jimmy Callagher coming into his rescue. And the clearance in the end by Fergal Ryan. Blocked down by Quigley. Here's Timmy Callagher. Hand passed outside to Jim Cashman. And that was very, very dangerous. And could have yielded a first Limerick goal. And you remember two years ago in a thriller in Limerick, there were eight goals shared between them. Brian Corcoran getting it away there from Steve McDonough. Getting the control, the shot. And that appears to have gone left and wide. Cork's third wide. Well, this, the goal incident a few seconds ago. Well, great work, first of all, for Mike Hoolan, who has started tremendously for Limerick. A low ball in, John O'Driscoll is fooled by the flight of the ball. Brilliant first save from Gerald Cunningham. And then, just as Tobin comes in, he saves it again. And brilliant double save by... And if Cork had got that, I think, yeah, if Limerick had got that, Cork would have been really out of the game. Yes, Gerald Cunningham has been given great service to Cork right over the years. Played his first championship match in 1981 against Clare. And the man alongside me was playing against him. Here's Barry Egan. A fine block down there by Mark Foley. This is great play by Limerick. Questions really been asked now of the Cork side. John O'Driscoll. Sean McCarthy under the dropping ball. Does well against Mike Hulham. Oh, great catch. That's Kevin Murray. That's going to the right and Joe Quay watches it go harmlessly wide. Some fine individual performances already to admire. First championship occasion for Jimmy Barry and his team of officials to be in charge. There's the subs bench, Dennis Walsh on his feet over there alongside Sean O'Gohalpine and all the other subs who might come on and make a contribution. Again it goes between Hulhan and McCarthy, won by Limerick, Galligan pressing it forward towards Damien Quigley. Jim Cashman aware of the danger, coming across to help Timmy Kelleher. All eyes on the ball. Kevin Murray, so quick over five metres. He's fouled by Kieran Carey. Free to Cork. Limerick leading by double scores. And there's the Limerick dugout, Dave Mahidi there on the right, coming in with the precious little drop of water. He's had the team training at the National Coaching and Training Centre attached to the University of Limerick. They look sharp. Cork trying to match them, and that's gone wide. It's one of those afternoons when your free taker really needs to be taking his chances. Well, well the first free that he got, uh, the, the 65, he just barely put it over the bar, even with the wind, and he didn't strike that one well either. So he hasn't started well. Mark Foley has started really well here at left wheel back for Limerick. And he's a real find, I think, for, for the Limerick men. And Cork are really facing an uphill battle at this stage. That's Kevin Kelly there, former all-star footballer. He's been looking after the Cork physical training. There's Gary Kirby. Already causing some menace. Galligan over there alongside Owen O'Neill. Comes out to Jim Cashman. Cashman started well. Shawnee McCarthy now. Pass Barry Egan in towards Kevin Murray. Came on against Limerick two years ago. Got two goals in the second half. In towards Alan Brown. Defended by Mike Nash. Runs on to Joe Quaid. Great stop by Joe Dean. Out it comes again towards Declan Nash. Lovely tidy hurler. Towards Barry Egan. Blocked down well by Mark Foley, and how well he has started. Well, as I was just saying, this man has a real fine for him. He has signed the challenge match recently, and he's very, very aggressive, very fast, very, very snappy player. And if he keeps up this, he will, he will, be, he will definitely establish himself on this Limerick team. He's got a brother who's also one of the subs this afternoon. Plenty of brothers with the O'Neills and with the Nashes involved for Limerick. Brian Corcoran trying to persist here against Mike Houlihan. Right in the corner, needing assistance, trying to make a better angle for himself, didn't hit it well, comes to Kieran Carey. Quick luck off to see who's available. That man again, Mark Foley's available. Over towards Shane O'Neill's corner, stopped over there by Fergal McCormick, runs on however. This is Sean O'Neill, dragged down by Kenny McCarthy, right on the 65 metre line, free to Limerick. 
Well, Limerick will be much happier, not alone will they lead by double scores, but they'll have the wind at their backs for the second 35 minutes. So Gary Kirby, and there's a view of the court bench, Jimmy Barry Murphy right in the centre there alongside Christy Cooney. We also got a glimpse of Dr. Con Murphy. So the running repairs have been carried out. The feet of Mike Houlihan, and that's what he's looking at. No particular hurry. Approaching 20 minutes gone. Jer Cunningham catches another good save. The delivery out towards Teddy McCarthy. I suppose with the wind at their backs, we're expecting a much, much longer delivery from Jer Cunningham this afternoon, but the Limerick forwards have been going in there, making life difficult for him. So he's had to hit it quickly. Cork have the free. It's going to be Jim Cashman who'll hit it in towards Kevin Murray, perhaps. Brother of Tom, who's one of the three selectors. No. Huge one. Not on target, however. Six wides now for Cork. None for Limerick. And Limerick leading 6-3. Certainly the pleasant conditions now here at Porky Cueve, making life much more bearable for the people who travel down here in their thousands today. Great Limerick support, it has to be said in particular. Joe Quaid's puck out. Towards Shane O'Neill. Caught by Fergal McCormack. Had been played as a midfielder at times during the National League. He's left up behind to Shane O'Neill. The race for possession here, won by Damien Quigley. He's causing Timmy Keller a lot of problems. Two balls that have come in towards him, and he's won each time. Oh, no, Neil now trying to swing the stick. There was Mike Gallagher outside him, more or less getting in his way. That's good, persistent play by Fergal Ryan to deny Ono Neil. Comes back out here towards Shane O'Neill. Inside towards Potts Tobin. Breaks loose, they're all in there waiting for it. And it's Fergal Ryan again who wins it, and it ends up being a sideline cut. Good play by the left half back there initially, but then he left a ball behind him. Smiling Willie Barrett, he was uh, in Clamel last summer to watch the Kerry Tip football game. I'm sure a disappointed Tipman at the end of all of that. Mike Cooler had cutting it in, right into the small rectangle. And Ono Neal scoops it in. Jerk Cunningham stops it on the line. A third fine save by Jerk Cunningham, keeping Cork well and truly in this match. Jim Cashman gets it out towards Mark Mullins. Mullins, Dave Clark loses the stick. It comes back towards Brian Corcoran. Playing on the 40, but playing very deep for that. Here's Mark Foley once again, giving a kind of man of the match type performance. Fouled, free out. Missed the save at the other end, and a crucial one at that. Well, just Cork are looking at the moment that it's not 263 points. This should have been a goal. A great, chance, a great save again by Jerry Cunningham, but very loose marking by the Cork full back line. And at this, uh, uh, right now, Cork are in real trouble. Limerick are much faster, much sharper, and much crisper. Cork unbeaten in championship hurling at Porky Cueve down the years. In fact, you've got to go back to 1922 23, I think. For the last time Cork lost in the championship in hurling here at least side, but that record is in real danger this afternoon. Damien quickly, score of 2 3 in the All Ireland final two years ago to Mike Gallagher, trying to dance away from Teddy McCarthy. Teddy picks up an injury as Sean O'Neill hits it and he puts it over the bar. Sean O'Neill from Murrow Bohr getting his first point and making it seven points to three. And there was an accidental clash. I think that's Teddy McCarthy who went down injured. And the court medical officer, Dr. Con Murphy, is in straight away to attend to him. Teddy today playing his 46th championship match, 26 in football, 19 in hurling. And he's played in eight All-Ireland finals. That's covering hurling and football. And just four All-Ireland senior medals for that. Terrific record down the year. Concern in the face of Jimmy Barry Murphy. What can he do in his first championship match in charge alongside Christy Cooney, the man in the glasses there, is the county chairman. We've got a glimpse of Tom Cashman as well. One of the selectors along with Tony O'Sullivan. 
And we've got some news from Tony O'Donoghue, I gather. 